And this is the nanoscope. So this is nanotechnology. And what we mean is it is tiny. This is a 1.9 diameter. And this is for arthroscopy. What's really cool about this that's different from what you're typically using is it's a chip on tip it's at the very end, which gives you a different field of view. You get 120 degree field of view as opposed to just 90 with your typical, typical arthroscope. This is also a little bit flexible as well, which is nice and it's tiny and it's really like a needle. I mean, you can do this. Um, there's people that do this in the office. And if you do, you hook up a little bit of just fluid and you can do diagnostic uh, arthroscopy. And just a quick tangent on that, just something to get you thinking about, what would you rather do, pay for a small kit in the office and see an osteochondral defect or spend $1,000 on an MRI? What would you rather have? That's just a side note, gets you thinking about the possibilities of this as a little teaser. That's what we're talking about when we say the nanoscope. Traditionally, positioning your handle with an arthroscope, you've got buttons and such. They've oriented this with a flat spot with few ridges, and that's basically going to help you with orientation. So I usually place my finger there and just rotate. I like to still have this kind of looking up with the tibia. And same thing with a regular scope. Wherever you have this position, you're basically looking. So the curve goes this way, just again like a regular scope. I did make these portals slightly larger because I did go in and create a, a little bit of pathology that I'd like to highlight and I needed the access, but you know, this is double what you need for this tiny nano instrumentation. So you really don't even need these portals. So we have our tibia up top, our Taylor dome, the shavers over here against the syndesmosis and the fibula. I'm a 4.0 scope guy traditionally, and but with this, I can get to the back. I can do all kinds of things with this, especially in those arthritic ankles, those that have large spurs, sometimes you worry and they don't, you don't get as much distraction. So it's a tighter space. So these little nano instruments have been really nice. So I have this pointing up. This won't change a lot, but it will change some. So let me come around and rotate this and we'll back up and show you. Okay, so here you go. So I'm gonna come around and basically I can look all the way down at the tip of the fibula right there. And on the first time you use this, you'll be like, wait, I'm looking straight at everything as opposed to going around the curve. It took me just a second, my very first case. So again, I just like how easy it is. It's light, it's easy in my hand, especially for the ankle. I mean, the ankle can be tricky at times in some of these tighter ankles. Um, and so I like just how versatile and how small this is. I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, number one, let me put the shaver back in here. I usually have a harder time getting towards the back. Again, this scope is a little bit flexible, but we can come towards the back. In fact, they have a little bit of pathology, a little bit of inflamed synovitis. And so, you know, you can come back and work. Again, think about the diameter, trying to get over the curve of the Taylor dome and getting towards the back can be tricky, but because these are smaller, it's a lot easier to reach the posterior aspect of the ankle. So I can come back, you can shave, and even though these shavers are small, they are actually still very aggressive and you still get good suction. So you can work back here. It's really nice to reach the posterior ankle without having to make a posterior portal. Say you are in a situation, you know, an acute fracture. There's so many indications for this. Diagnosing your syndesmosis, the deltoid osteochondral defects, intraarticular fractures, and confirming. It's really nice to just quickly open that disposable kit and get confirmation. Sometimes radiographs are deceiving and you get in and you're like, ooh, that needs to come down a little bit more. That isn't quite lined up as well as the floral shows. So, and the patient's always, you know, you show them the fracture from the inside. It's always really impressive. Moving on to just a couple of other pathologies. When you're in the chronic situation, I find there's a lot of value in arthroscopy and studies will back you up on that for multiple reasons. First being, you'll always find pathology. There's always synovitis. They've been rolling the ankle, you should be scoping. There's nothing worse than a nice stable ankle that still hurts or has an impingement on the gutters or something. So spend some time there. I think that's standard. But I will tell you, I've been noticing that there's a few patients that go on to, and you've heard the term before, of global instability or potentially some syndesmotic instability or deltoid. And we've talked about that on the panel briefly. So I wanna highlight how I'm diagnosing that and there's a trend towards, basically the MRI will clue you in, but there's nothing like confirming instability on the scope. And so how can you do that? Well, if you come over to the fibula and you push, in fact, let me, let's switch over to our 3.5. When I'm doing diagnostic things, I like the size of a 3.5 because several of the studies match up to that diameter for confirmation. And I'd like to know if there's any instability of the syndesmosis. And so if you come over to the front, the anterior face of the fibula, and you give it a little subtle 
push, you'll see some widening. And I've actually already indented and soft cadaver bone. So, but I would normally push right here and you'll see the fibula rock back and sometimes a little bit rotate in this area. And once you do that on a normal patient, I'll put that in my op report that the syndesmosis was found to be stable. You'll easily pick up on unstable. And one of the quickest ways to do that is to see if the shaver fits up in between here. So this is a 3-5 shaver, and it does not. If this was intact, and I will tell you, I, I did release it uh, in preparation for this just so I could demonstrate it. But if you can get a 3-5 shaver in, and, and studies actually show sometimes 2.5 or 3.0, guidance paper is 3.0 millimeter probe. If that will fit into the syndesmosis, that is considered unacceptable instability, and you should not just do your brostrum. So if I can get up in there, I'll go up with the shaver, and I'll clean out so that I can reduce it, especially in the chronic situation. I think that's important. You know, I would take a couple minutes and really clean this out with the shaver. You'll get reduction because you know it's scarred in. And uh, you can see my distal, the Bassett's ligament, and the distal portion of the syndesmosis that I disrupted here just to show it. But if you can come into this area and work your way back in between, as you can see here, with a shaver, if you leave that, when it's there, the patient will still have instability and symptoms, even with a nice brostrum. Just one little pearl. Check your syndesmosis. It doesn't happen on every case, but you know, throughout the year, there's a handful of cases where I find the MRI didn't necessarily tell me that it was unstable, but they have this subtle, you would call it syndesmotic instability. And this is actually being used all over the body. It's fascinating where they're starting to use this hand and wrist and, and even outside of orthopedics. So here's the medial side, here's the medial gutter. And you can come down and see that the deltoid has been disrupted here, the anterior cuff. In a chronic setting, I'll usually see that it's avulsed off of the bone. You can see the chronic changes usually through here. And sometimes you'll even see the posterior tibial tendon. I didn't release back that far. But come and document your deltoid, especially on ankle unstable patients. Once you look and see normal, it's so much easier to see pathologic. So start to do this test. The last little maneuver I'll show you is a medial drive-through sign. So I usually use the 4-0 torpedo. This is a 3-5, but our recent studies are showing the 3-5 might be the cutoff to diagnose instability of the deltoid. So fluoroscopic evaluation. And then also, if you can take, and knowing what we know about the medial gutter, if you can fit this shaver into the medial gutter, Think about what the talus is doing, how much widening you have here and how much incompetence you have of the deltoid. So this would be a positive drive-through sign. If I can fit that in between my medial gutter, in my opinion, you should open up the deltoid and do a medial repair. And we have data that's starting to show that as well and confirm that that's a good validated test. So come over every time you scope an ankle, put the shaver here, and most of the time, if the deltoid's intact, you cannot get this in, you shouldn't. It should be nice and tight with the deltoid holding, but if you can take, and I release the deltoid or the front portion, and now if you can fit that in there in that medial gutter, then you have chronic deltoid tear. And that's when I would, I think it's warranted to open and repair. So basically, like I said, it's very versatile. You can get anywhere, get to the back, diagnostic value, looking at osteochondral defects, just how easy it is to work your way all the way around the ankle. It's good quality. The high flow sheath is made, regular arthroscopy easy. It'll be very interesting to see where we go with this in the future in all the little cool areas. I know, uh, as you mentioned, the tendons, the subtalar joint, people are doing this for the midfoot, diagnosing uh, first MTP pathology, second MTP. Is there a plantar plate tear? Can I just do a chylectomy? Is there an osteochondral defect? You know, it's a lot cheaper than an MRI and really more specific. Start using it where you're already scoping and then just venture out from there. And if you're not scoping, this is a great way to get into it, being so tiny. It's so much easier to scope a joint with these tiny little cool nano instruments.